Hello and welcome back to 1001 Beers. You must try before you die. I'm back here for another lockdown beer review. We're in the pandemic still, but I've got my Reading Ale Trail t-shirt on, even though the Reading Ale Trail's not on at the moment because we had to postpone it. Um, but I'm here. It's been a lovely day today. It's VE Day when I'm recording this. 75th anniversary of VE Day. Today is actually a bank holiday, even though you wouldn't really know it. Uh, but me and my partner have decided we're getting sloshed this weekend. So this is peer review number one of, uh, of of Sloshington. So this is from Belgium, actually. It's one of the few Belgian beers I've not tried. So I'm quite excited about this one, uh, especially as it's not a typical Belgian style, which is good. So first brew 1920. It's been around a while, but it's not one of the old fashioned ones. But there's a reason why it's 1920 in it. There's a, there's a story about that. A really interesting story. It's 5.5%. And it is special Dirick. Never had it before. I'd never seen it before. I found it online somewhere. Um, it's got a story on the back. Brilliant. Okay, so let's crack this open. I've got uh, a sort of a, this sort of glass here. So let's have a go at that, and then we'll talk about the the actual beer. Oh, oh, it's really lively. Bloody hell. That is a lively beer. I've lost some of it. That is a shame. Right, let's try and get some of this in the glass. Crikey, I'm glad I got my beer towel down. This has been standing upright for months. So, I don't know why it's suddenly gone a bit mad. It's almost certainly going to be bottle condition, but it's so lively, I'm probably going to get some of the, some of the bits in it. Right, let's leave that last bit in the bottle there. I've lost some of it in my beer towel as well, but that's okay. It's clearly still I've got bags of life to it. Let's put that glass to one side. Haven't had that happen for ages. That's exciting. Right, put my Starship Enterprise bottle open to the side. Right, there we go. Wash my hand on my beer. I've got a lovely West Berkshire Brewery uh, beer towel here, but it's now a bit sodden, so I have to go in the wash, but it's been a while since so that's happened, so that's exciting. Right, so... First off, uh, let's look at the bottle. Now a little bit wet, but this is, it's kind of a, the, the bottle picture in the book looks far more exciting than this one. This looks quite boring. It's kind of like big bowl font. In fact, the, the label's on slightly skew with, which I kind of like. Uh, it's got a slightly amateur um, and more genuine look to it, but it has got a little story in the back. So, special Derrick arose in 1920 and is still brewed today by the original recipe resulting in recognition as an original Special Belge. A delicious amber-coloured top-fermented beer brewed by a small Belgian brewery only with natural ingredients. It's got a gold coin, World Beer Cup. Very tiny little gold coin there. Um, from Brewery de Rick. Uh, and that's it. So I'll leave the little entrails there. Um, in fact, I'm going to get rid of this towel because it's going to be sit standing in wet. Put that to one side. So, tasting notes. Special direct pours a bright and clear amber, whether from bottle or tap. Light floral hops and biscuit in the nose. These days, its hot business is more noticeable than the lightly sweet maltiness, especially when fresh. Begs to be gulped in quantity. Well, that's exciting. It's died down a bit now. It's uh, It had a huge head and I was letting it sit there and it's, it's dying down a bit. So yeah, absolutely a bright amber. It's a little bit clear, but obviously through its excitement, it's kind of a, the conditioning's in the glass a bit, but that's fine. Um, let's see if it's got the light floral hops and biscuit in the nose. I'm getting the light floral hops, I'm not getting much biscuit. I am getting a Belgian-y smell though. So that's kind of, I don't know, Belgian beers have a scent to them. Uh, not an unpleasant scent, but it's very identifiable as a Belgian scent. So I think without further ado, let's go for the taste. Cheers. That's very nice. It's kind of um, very light, kind of almost like a honeyness to it. Um, um, yeah, it's quite good. I wouldn't call it like, it hasn't blown my mind. I thought it was gonna be really, really exciting because it's called special, but it's, it's not that exciting. Um, I will tell you a bit about the brewery, though. It says a direct brewery is one of those family-run outfits that's not supposed to exist anymore. Despite its local success, the big fish have not gobbled it up yet, thankfully. 
Um, the brewer, Anne de Rick, is the great-granddaughter of the founder, Gustav de Rick, and she learned her trade in Germany like her ancestor. Um, uh, a bit about what the brewery, the brew house is called. Uh, the brewery was originally called uh, uh, the Golden Eagle. That's what it is. And then they renamed themselves to the Rick, the family name in 1920. And then they launched this. This is an English inspired pale ale. That's why 1920 is important because it was... They brewed it as a, a, because that beer was especially popular in Belgium between the World Wars, the English Pale Ale, for some reason. Um, so, interestingly, De Rick's version predates the more famous Palm from 1928 and De Koenig from 1939, although there are several references to Belgian special Pale Ales going back to 1900. The special remains a simple beer of character. Its strength has inched upwards from around 4% to about 5.5%, but remains thirst quenching and sessionable. Although its malt backbone and classy hopping keep a certain Englishness, its light body and crisp bark are distinctly Belgian. Uh, like the brewery itself, the special has no doubt un- evolved over the years, but probably not much. So it has got that kind of English beer taste, English English pale ale. It's basically like an English pale ale with a slight fizz from Belgium. Uh, that's how I describe it. It's not that hoppy. The maltiness is what you get most of, especially now I'm drinking it more. Very reminiscent of an English pale ale, uh, and I can and that's what that 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 significance of the year was. It first brewed because it was brewed because of the popularity, and that's why you know that's that's an interesting footnote to beer history if you think about it. When actually, because now in England, Belgian beer styles are now being brewed a lot by English brewers as well as American beer styles, and that but but actually. English beer styles were the ones that were the most popular at a certain point in history. Um, it's 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 nice. I, I I can see why it's in the book because it is an interesting. Uh, it's got a very interesting characteristics for it, and it's yeah you know, very unique. But it's not going to blow your socks off, and it's not incredible. Uh, but I do like it. If someone said, "Would you like a case of this?" I go, "Yeah, I'd happily drink it." Um, I'd love to have this on draft. I think this would be far better on draft. I'd love a pint of this or a, a sort of a Stein kind of thing. Of it. That would be lovely. In a bottle, it's not quite... I feel like I'm rationing it to myself a bit, especially because the bottle, the, the nature of bottle conditioning is you lose a bit and then that bit, and then it was so fizzy it came out. So I kind of feel like I've missed out a bit. So I'm only going to have to try and find this again on draft somewhere near the village of Herzili or Herzil. Uh, or nearby towns, I don't know where that is in Belgium, but somewhere. Uh, And I think I'll leave it there. So like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you for another beer review very, very soon.